Today we will make a very simple dash ability and also add some effects using Niagara in Unreal Engine 5. Let's make a new project. I will use a third person template. I will call my project dash effect. Create. Let's make some space. I will select one of these walls and rotate and scale it. So first we will make the dash ability and then we will add some effects to it. So in third person in blueprints, we will open the third person character blueprint. So we will add a very simple dash ability. So when key E is pressed, we want our player to dash. For that, let's make a few variables. First, we will need a boolean. We'll call it can dash. Compile and by default it should be true because when the game starts the player should be able to dash. Let's make another variable. This will be a float. This will be a float and we will call it dash cooldown. Let's compile and by default I'm going to use uh, 2 as the dash cooldown. So by default the dash cooldown will be 2. So we will wait for 2 seconds before being able to dash again after a previous dash. Now let's also make one more variable. I will call it old velocity. This will be a vector. So when E is pressed, we will first check if we can dash. So let's get the can dash variable. Let's make a branch. And the first thing we need to do is we need to set this can dash to false. So leave this unchecked, it is false. Now I will set this old velocity. So first we will get the character movement component and from there we will get velocity. And I will set this old velocity. Then I will get our actors forward vector. And I will multiply this by 5000. So we can convert this pin. I will convert it to float and set it to 5000. Then we will get our character movement component and we will set velocity. After that, we will wait for 0 0.2 seconds. So we will use a delay node. And after that, we will set the velocity of character movement component again to the one that it had before. So get character movement and set velocity. You can try setting this velocity to zero, but in third person movement, in third person character games, I like to set this to old velocity. And after that, we will wait for dash cooldown. And after the dash cooldown, we will set the can dash to true again. So I think our dash ability is done. Let's see if our player is able to dash. So yeah, when we press the E key, we can dash. So right now, uh, I am not going to use any special animations for this. You can try and use different dash animations if you like to. But for now, to make it look a little bit better, I am going to add a field of view effect. So that will make it feel like uh, we are actually dashing, not just running and the speed is increasing. So a field of view effect will make it look a little bit better. It will make it look like we are actually dashing. So back in our third person blueprint, I will make a custom event. I'll call it uh, start FOV. I'll make another custom event. I'll call it end FOV or let's say stop FOV. Now we also need one more variable. Let's say this is as applied FOV. This will be a boolean. 
So we want to start FOV only if we have not already applied FOV. So let's get as applied FOV and let's also get a, a node boolean and from there let's get a branch. So if we have not already applied FOV, only then we want to be able to apply FOV. Only then we want to trigger this event. So after that we need to set this as applied FOV. Yes. Now we have applied FOV and same let's also add it to this stop, e stop FOV. So we will get our has applied FOV and in this case we do not need a node boolean. So in this case we will check if we have already applied FOV and only if we have already applied FOV only then we will be able to stop the FOV. So let's drag from here and get a branch. Now we need a timeline. I'll call it FOV timeline. We also need a LERP node. Let's open the timeline by double clicking. And the length, I will set it to 0 0.1. So our timeline will run for 0 0.1 seconds. Let's add a new float track. I'll call it alpha. And let's add some keys. Let's add a key here. The time will be 0. And the value will be 0. Let's add one more key. The time will be 0 0.1. It will be whatever you have set here. So I have set 0 0.1. So the time here is 0 0.1. And the value will be 1. Back in the event graph. Let's connect this alpha to the alpha of the LARP node. And we also need one more variable. Let's call it something like old FOV. This will be a float. Now let's uh, get the follow camera. From there we will get the field of view. Then we will set our old FOV. So it will be from here. From the start FOV event here. And after setting the old FOV, we will play our, our timeline. And we also need to now change the field of view of our camera. So let's get our follow camera and say set field of view. It will be this function set field of view. And uh, this return value will be connected to the field of view in this function. And this will run on update. Now our old FOV will be A. In the lap node, we will connect our old FOV to A. And to our old field of view, we will add uh, some number. I will add 10. And this will be our B. And uh, when we stop FOV, we want to play the timeline in reverse. And we want to check the direction. We'll use this equal enum. We'll use this uh, backward direction. So that will mean if our direction is backwards when our timeline has finished then we want to do something. So first let's get a branch and we will connect this branch to this finished. So when our timeline finished if it was playing backwards that means our FOV has been stopped our FOV effect has been stopped. So then we want to reset this uh, variable. We will set it to false. So now because our uh, Field of view effect is stopped. We have no longer applied FOV. Now let's get some space here. And before this delay, we will say start FOV. And after this delay, we will say stop FOV. Now our dash ability sh should have some field of view effect applied to it. Let's check. So yeah, right now it looks like our dash ability has some simple field of view effect applied to it and it looks a little bit better than before. Now let's apply the Niagara effects. So back in our content folder, I will make a new asset. I'll make a new Niagara system. We'll use uh, create empty system. We'll call it dash effect. Let's open it by double clicking. 
and the first thing here in system update let's set this loop duration to 0 0.2 our delay is for 0 0.2 so we will set everything here for 0 0.2 seconds all all durations we, we will set here to 0 0.2 seconds now we will uh, create a new emitter we will select empty so in this properties we can select the gpu compute one and let's also set this calculate bounds to fixed now in the initialize particle we want to set the lifetime to 0 0.2 and we want to set a color so let's select this and say direct set i will select a light blue color and opacity here alpha here i will set it to 0 0.05 actually you can try different values this effect is very subtle and i like it to be very subtle actually now in the spawn we need something let's say initialize mesh reproduction sprite and here we need to select our mesh so it will be the queen one and let's also click this fix now button gpu cpu accessor and also in the emitter state let's select the life cycle to self and here also we want to set this loop duration to 0 0.2 seconds now in the particle update let's say scale color so we can look for scale color and i want to change the alpha so let's select this float from curve you can also type float from curve and somewhere like here i want to add a new key and let's drag it down a bit so in the beginning the alpha decreases uh, very fast so you want to make it something like this also let's uh, spawn our particles by adding a new module here let's say spawn rate you can also look for rate spawn rate and i will set it to something like uh, 25600 and also let's uh, increase the size of our particles so here in particle space scale let's say something like 12 now let's see how it looks so back in our third person character blueprint we can select this mesh and after this mesh is selected let's add an agra component so we will look for Niagara particle system component and it already selected the one that is actually selected in content row and it is open if it is not already selected for you you can select one from here let's compile save and uh, in this effect let's turn off uh, auto activate so we can turn off auto activate now in our event graph we can activate our effect just before our f field of view effect starts so i will get some space here and before we start the field of view effect we will activate our dash effect so let's get dash effect and uh, we will say set active and this will be true and uh, after our field of view effect stops we will say we will get a dash effect and we will say set active and these two will be false now let's see if our character has the effect applied to him so if we dash we can see that we have a very subtle dash effect applied on the character I like it to be like uh, very subtle. I don't want uh, these effects to be very noticeable. But if you want uh, to have a more noticeable effect, you can increase the opacity and see. So here, if we increase the opacity to something like 0 0.2, we'll see the effect is more noticeable now. I just like the 
0.051 so i will keep it that at, at that so here you can see that uh, we have applied dash effect to our character so even without any special dash animations this character looks very good with uh, a field of view effect and this uh, niagara effect applied now I will also apply this uh, dash Niagara effect to the ball game that we are making. So here I have the ball game project open. So in the content folder, let's add a Niagara system asset. Create an empty system. And I'll call it dash effect. Let's double click and open it. Again in the update, we will set this loop duration to 0.2. And let's add a new empty emitter. So from add emitter, we will select empty. Now in the properties, let's say this is CPU compute and also let's select this uh, bounce to be fixed. And in the update, we want to set the spawn rate. Let's say this is something like 25,600. In the initialized particle as well, we will set the lifetime. Let's set the lifetime to 0 0.2. And let's also direct set the color. I will keep the color as white, but I'll change the alpha. I'll make the alpha to something like 0 0.2. Now here in the particle update, let's also do the same with color. Let's say scale color. And in under scale alpha, we will select float from curve. And we will add a new key here. We will drag it down a bit. And uh, in the particle spawn, we will say static mesh location. And we will select the static mesh. This will be the ball mesh that we used. And back in our initialized particle, let's set the size mode of our sprites to uniform. And we want our sprites to be 10 times normal size. So let's open our layer blueprint and also the controller blueprint and in the player we will select this ball and after selecting this ball we will add a new component let's look for niagara particle system component and we will add it let's say this is something like dash effect and select our effect for now this is how it is looking and we also want to turn off auto activate now in our controller blueprint before we set the velocity before we set the physics linear velocity we want to activate our emitter so first let's get our player and from the player we will get the dash effect and we'll say set active both of these will be true And after we set the velocity back to zero, we'll again get our player and we'll get our dash effect. And we'll say set active. Both of these will be false. Let's see how it is looking. So for now, this is how it is looking. And uh, I want the effect to be even more uh, less noticeable than it is right now so i will decrease the alpha even more so here in our initialized particle module in the color we will say the alpha should be 0 0.02 so for the ball game i think uh, this effect is uh, very nice this is not very noticeable but I think I like this one. I like it like this. If you want a more noticeable effect, you can actually go and change the alpha value to some different value and see what you like. And I really want to know all of your feedback. So please let me know your feedback in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.